Welcome back everyone to LearnNeuroRadiology.com to this second video from our Brain Capstone course. In this video, we're gonna talk about choosing the best brain imaging modality or how to choose what kind of imaging you wanna do. If you haven't seen the first video on different types of modalities that we use, be sure to go back and check that out. Uh, that will be a nice introduction to this video. Uh, this is the topics that we're covering overall in this course. Uh, we've already talked about the different modalities done in brain imaging. Today, we're going to talk about choosing an appropriate imaging modality. So how do you figure out what kind of imaging you want to perform? Uh, so head CT is often done in patients that come in with new symptoms. So if you come to the emergency department uh, with something like the worst headache of your life, new neurologic symptoms or focal neurologic symptoms like weakness or sensory symptoms. Uh, we do a head CT a lot after trauma, so high-speed uh, motor vehicle accidents, falls, fights, like those kinds of things. A lot of times we'll do head CT to follow subacute abnormalities, right? So if the, you know a patient has hemorrhage or stroke, we'll follow them up for that as well. Uh, a lot of times we may also do a head CT if a patient has a known abnormality, like a tumor or epilepsy, and if they have new findings, like so they have a new neurologic symptom, then we're looking for something that's getting worse, whether it's hemorrhage, worsening edema or herniation, uh, but then you may have to continue and get an MRI to uh, further evaluate the primary abnormality, particularly if it's a tumor or, or some subtle abnormality. Now, vessel imaging, we uh, talked about in the last video, uh, it's possible to do CT angiography. This is commonly used in the setting of stroke. We do CT angiograms, particularly in the first six to 24 hours after stroke. So if someone's symptoms at an onset of a couple hours, we tend to go straight to CT angiography. We do CT angiography in trauma uh, to further evaluate the vessels. If patients have a hemorrhage that you see on a CT of the head, a lot of times we'll look for an underlying cause. Now, CT venograms, we also do a fair amount. Uh, if patients have elevated intracranial pressure or they have papal edema, headache, like signs that their uh, pressure is elevated, we may be concerned about an occlusion to a vein. If patients have atypical hemorrhage in an unusual distribution, like so if that's peripheral, or if it's a young patient that wouldn't usually have a hypertensive hemorrhage, you might wanna look at a CT venogram to look for an underlying cause of hemorrhage. And again, trauma, particularly if there are fractures that are next to the dural sinuses, and that's most commonly uh, to the back of the head or the occipital bone. CTA and CTV are really more used in the acute phase. So if time is critical and the patient's coming in and you need to make management decisions quickly, go straight to, uh, to CTA or CTV if you want to evaluate the vessels. Now, what about MRI of the brain? So many times we'll use an MRI of the brain to assess an abnormality that we found out about on a CT. So if a patient has a CT as a screening exam and they have edema, uh, if they have signs of a stroke or tumor or hydrocephalus, uh, we'll want to look for it. Uh, we'll also use it as a more sensitive screening tool for subtle pathology. A lot of times small tumors or metastatic disease won't be visible on a CT, so we'll proceed to do an MRI. Epilepsy, many of the underlying structural causes of epilepsy, not visible on a CT, so you're going to need to go ahead and do an MRI. Stroke, uh, we'll do it in the subacute phase to more definitively establish uh, how much tissue is dead what the extent of the stroke is. MRI is really a better exam when time is less critical. It takes a little more time. You have to screen the patient, make sure it's safe. Uh, the cost is higher. So just be aware of that and uh, use MR when you want more and better information, but it takes a little bit longer. So when should you give contrast, like particularly on an MRI of the brain? Uh, so most of the time you get a lot of the information uh, without a contrast exam. If you're doing a screening exam, so it's like relatively low probability of something uh, severely abnormal, headache, stroke, vertigo, those kinds of things, you often don't need to give contrast. If you're looking for structure abnormalities like uh, cortical malformations or you know schizencephaly and things like that, uh, you'll see those very well without contrast. Now, if you have a high probability of acute illness, right, as you're in the hospital and uh, something seriously is wrong, uh, you have neurologic symptoms, you probably will go ahead and give intravenous contrast. This is better for seeing things like infection, meningitis, or new onset of seizure, like maybe you wanna make sure there's not some serious underlying pathology. Uh, if you have known pathology such as an infection or tumor, again, like contrast is often gonna be used to better see that abnormality. In general, when you're ordering an MRI, you should request contrast if you have a higher suspicion of an abnormality and the suggestion that it's more acute. So, and if the symptoms are more acute, then contrast is more likely to be useful. 
vessel imaging on MRI. A lot of times we're going to use it in stroke, uh, particularly in subacute to chronic strokes or after about 24 hours. So we're not trying to make a time critical decision about when someone should go for an angiogram. Um, MR angiography uh, will often do it to evaluate aneurysm and vascular malformations like in the outpatient setting. Venography, the indications are very similar to CT. Uh, we'll use it to evaluate uh, for elevated intracranial pressure or atypical hemorrhage just when time is less critical. And again, like just to highlight that, MRA and MRV is used in the subacute phase when timing is less important. Thanks for tuning into this video about how to choose different imaging modalities for to image the brain. Uh, the next video is going to cover basic principles of how to review cases on your own. We'll go through some of the key features that you need to look at in images, and you'll learn some uh, ways to look at images on your own. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like the video and uh, hit the subscribe button so you get notified uh, when we put out new videos. Thank you.